listen to the angels rejoicing air so sweetly receiving heaven's glory the night that Christ was born listen to the angels rejoicing air so sweetly receiving heaven's glory Coming from every nation, coming from every nation, pleading for their salvation, pleading for salvation. The night that Christ, the night that Christ was born. Hallelujah.
Hello, and welcome to Grace United Methodist Church's virtual services. Grace United Methodist Church is located at 7101 North 20th Street in the West Oak Lane section of Philadelphia. Grace can be reached at YouTube and Facebook at Grace UMC, the place to be. We can be reached on the web now at graceumcogonts.org. We can be reached via phone at 215-509-0619. Thank you for joining us, and here's our pastor, the Reverend Stephen Michael Pittman. God bless you. Welcome to Grace UMC is the place to be. We are so glad that you could join us here today. We thank God for the birth of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as a friendly reminder, we will be here on Christmas Eve at 7 p.m. So please come out and join us for worship. But beloved, we're going to go into our time of worship. Let us be blessed and enjoy. presence of God this morning. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just love you. We adore you, God. We come before you acknowledging you and just welcoming you in our presence today. And dear God, we just ask for your continued blessings, your continued protection and guide. And all these things we ask in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Ready to be to go. 
and finished his race. Even when I broke, broke your heart, my sins tore us apart, but I'm standing right here in the midst of my tears, I claim you to be the Lamb of God. New life can begin, yeah, for you washed away, washed away every one of my sins, whom the Son set free is truly free indeed. I claim you to be the Lamb of God. Precious Lamb of God. The precious Lamb of God. Born in the sin that I may live again. Born into sin that I may live again. The precious Lamb. The precious Lamb. So you died for me, you shed your blood for me, you love me, Lord. Why you love me so, Lord, I shall never know. You gave your life for me, Lord. I don't know why you love me so, Lord. I love you too, Lord. Lord, I just say thank you. pray for our church family today. We ask, Lord, for comfort for the families of Reverend Margaret Trice, Miss Rosemary Watts, Miss Virginia Richards, Mr. William Roberts Jr., and Miss Rhonda George. We pray, Lord, that these families are comforted, that they receive peace and strength. Lord, we ask that you wrap your loving and warm presence around them. And Lord, we take solace in knowing that these precious saints 
knew your son Jesus as Lord and Savior, and therefore they will rest in eternity with you. God, we also pray for those who are in need of healing today, those who may be sick and shut in, those who may be in the hospitals, rehabilitation centers, those who may be home, those who may be watching. We know that you are a God of miracles, Lord. And so, Lord, we ask that you bring about your mighty presence in your anointing and touch them right now in the name of Jesus, from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. Put them on solid ground and let them continue to trust in you because you are their rock and their anchor. And so, Lord, we praise you for the miracles that you have done. And we praise you for the things that you continue to do. In all things, Lord, we give you all honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, Grace, and Merry Christmas. The Worship Planning Committee meeting has been rescheduled for Monday, December 21st at 6 p.m. via Zoom. If you are interested in being a part of this committee and or assisting in the potential for a virtual Sunday school, please join in the meeting. There will be no Bible study for the next two weeks. It will resume on January 6th at I'm sorry, January 6, 2021 at 6 p.m. via Zoom. Join us for a virtual Christmas Eve service on Thursday, December 24th at 7 p.m. The link will be sent to you via text. Your generous giving continues to be a blessing and is greatly appreciated. Please continue with these efforts. You can, you can send in your tithes and offering to Grace United Methodist Church, 7101 North 20th Street, Philadelphia, PA, 19138. Or you could bring your tithes and offering to the church mail slot on Tuesdays and Saturdays between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. However, on December 26, there will be no uh, collection at the church office. If you choose, you can either use bill pay or you can download the cash app to your cell phone and send your tithes and offering to dollar sign grace is the place. As we all know, 2020 has been a challenging year in so many ways. Grace has lost a number of members, family of our members and friends of grace. We would like to take this opportunity to honor the lives of those who have transitioned to be with our Lord and Savior. Among them are Dorothy Tinsley, Rosemary Watts, Virginia Richards, Margaret Trice, Jeanette Robinson, Joseph Mickey, Charles Robinson, Avalon White, Donald Stevens, Peggy Pugh, Susie Dabner, Rosa Napoleon, Sharon Washington, Alan Taylor Jr., Philip Ford, and Rhonda George. Information concerning the celebration of life for our most recently departed members will be sent via robocall or text as they become available. Let us continue to pray for the families of those precious loved ones. Let us continue to pray for those who are on our sick and recovering list. Let us continue to pray for each other. Please remember social distancing and please remember to wear your mask when you are out of your homes during this holiday season. I wish each of you a safe week and please have a very Merry Christmas. And until next week, Take care and God bless. Now, for your reading this morning, the scripture comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. I will be reading from the NIV version. Thus is the word of God. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married 
to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. This is the word of God for the people of God. May these words continue to give us hope, peace, and great joy. Amen. Amen.
climb up and sometimes I'm down sometimes sometimes I'm level to the ground Amen. Does somebody desire a clean heart? The reminder today is nothing is impossible for God. At some point in our lives, we all face some situations that seem to be unsolvable. They appear to be impossible. They seem to be incapable of being done or obtained or fulfilled. And it can be intimidating because oftentimes these situations are bigger than we are. It's similar to David and Goliath. Goliath tried to get David to compare size and trash talk David before the battle. Goliath was trying to make David give up and quit in his mind even before the battle began. But David didn't let that happen. David talked back. David trusted God and God helped David to overcome the giant. And so there are times in our lives where we face giants as well. The giants of sickness, depression, debt, broken relationships, people, institutions that appear to be bigger than us. They look impossible to overcome, but we have to talk back to those situations and remind them that we will not be intimidated. We have to declare that we have the victory in Jesus Christ. And no matter what the situation is, we have to remember that we serve a mighty God. We have to trust that God will help us overcome the impossible. In Genesis, we saw how God created the earth, the sky, the moon, the stars, the sun, land, sea. We read in Genesis how God made humans out of dust. Basically, God has the ability to make something out of nothing. And so if God can create all of these different things, anything is possible. And Matthew 19, 26 reminds us with men, things are impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And so you have to remind yourself that what is too big for you to handle is not for God. God can handle it. In the text, 
Matthew seemed to be facing an impossible situation. Mary discovers that she is about to birth a child. And on the surface, that's a very sticky situation. She was engaged to her fiance, Joseph, but what she wasn't married. She was a virgin, which in many ways is considered basically to be sacred. And in this time, it is much different from the way things are today. In today's society, children are, are born out of the context of marriage and people don't really think twice about it. But at that time, during the biblical times, a woman could be shamed, she could be excommunicated, or even harmed for having a child outside of the context of marriage. And so it would be a source of embarrassment and tension for her and for her future husband, Joseph. And we read in the scripture how Joseph, he might have had all these different insecurities and, and how you know, he, he may have been wondering, oh, man, you know, when, when Mary started to show, you know, is Mary creeping? And, you know, how are we going to explain all of this? We And we read in the scriptures, at one point, Joseph was considering how to quietly separate from Mary and not uh, to give her too much disgrace. Right. So they both found themselves an impossible situation. But God informs Mary that she is about to have a son. He would be great. He would be the savior of the world that had been prophesied in several scriptures, including 2 Samuel 7, 20, uh, 12 to 16. His name is Jesus. And so this was the savior that had been prophesied and would bring salvation to many. And even though she was facing what seemed to be impossible, God tells Mary that she is highly favored. When you face the impossible, remember that God has favored you to complete your God-given assignments. The word favor in the Greek means grace. In other words, God favored, God graced Mary to be the mother of Jesus. And so in the same way, God has favored you. And throughout our lives, God gives us all assignments. And sometimes your assignments seem to be very complicated. It feels like you're on mission impossible. But whatever your assignment is that God has given you, God has graced you to complete that assignment. My wife and I had the assignment of raising two small children in the atmosphere of this pandemic. At times we had to figure out the balance between work and home life. And uh, at times we were not sure what to do. But when we hit those points, we had to remind ourselves that God gave us these babies. God knew what he was doing. And this pandemic is not a surprise to God. We are able to take care of our children because God has graced us to be able to do so. In the same way, God makes the impossible possible because he enables you to complete your assignments. And whenever you feel tired, frustrated, or worn out, and, and you wonder how everything is going to work out, just know that you are highly favored. You have the grace for it. You are graced to be a parent or grandparent. You are graced for the assignment on your job. You are graced to be a part of the ministry that God has assigned you to. You are graced to overcome issues and problems. You have the grace that you need to walk with God. You have been favored for a purpose. And as you continue to walk with God, know that God can do the impossible despite your limitations and your lack of qualifications. We know that on paper, Mary wasn't the most qualified person to have the, and mother to have the savior of the world. She was very young and inexperienced. She didn't come from a wealthy background. She would be misunderstood on many levels. And so with her limitations and lack of qualifications, Mary wondered why God would use somebody like her. Sometimes in the same way, <clears throat> we tell God why God shouldn't use us and would be able to use us. 
I'm too young. I'm too old. I don't have the qualifications, the experience. Society looks at me as damaged goods. I've experienced too much trauma and been through too much pain. But we have to remember that God qualifies the unqualified. We have to remember that God uses the least likely to do the almighty. And like Mary, some of you have wondered why God would use somebody like you. And yes, you should be messed up in a psych ward. Yes, you could have died years ago. And in this case, I'm going to answer that question with a question. Why not you? In spite of your limitations and your qualifications, you are here today because God has kept you and God has not through with you yet. You are alive today because of God's mercy. And if God can use Gideon, who was the least likely of his clan, if God can use Joseph, who was rejected by his brothers, if God could use Moses, who was separated from his mother at birth, God can use you too. God can do the impossible. You have to continue to operate with humility. One of the reasons that God could use Mary was that she was humble. And so God uses those who operate in humility in order to accomplish his purposes. You know, on social media, we see a lot of people who try to hype themselves up and do a lot of self-promoting. They try to rely on their own talent and ability. Uh, as children of the Most High God, we need to operate in a different way. As children of the Most High God, as we believe, the, believe God to do the impossible, we don't try to believe our own press or hype ourselves up and operate in our own strength. We find our strength in Christ. We remember Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And we don't lean on our own strength. As Proverbs 3.5 says, we don't lean to our own understanding. But what we do is we trust God every step of the way. And so we lean on God's strength and we lean on God's understanding. You have to remember that when you come to places in your life that seem to be impossible, you have to hold on and remember the word and the promise that God gave to you. When times are tough, when everything looks bleak and everything looks the opposite of what God told you, when it doesn't look like what God has spoken to you will happen, you have to hold on to what God has promised you. Uh, that Those promises and that word that God gave you, it helps you to get through the tough times. And those promises keep something in front of you. It gives you something to look forward to. It helped Abraham remember that he would have a son. It helped Joseph remember that he would leave his family. He would lead his family. And so you have to hold on to the word and hold on to the promises that God gave you. And the great thing about our God is that God has a way of encouraging you at the right time. And God will send signs of confirmation of the word that he gave you. Mary's cousin, Elizabeth, was pregnant with John. And we know that uh, Elizabeth's womb leaked when she saw Mary's womb. And for her, that was a sign of confirmation. And so what God is doing in your life, uh, sometimes as a sign of confirmation, will be similar to what God is doing in somebody else's life. And God brings confirmation in different ways. It could be through a sermon. It could be someone else who says exactly what you were thinking. And in the way that God sent the uh, angel Gabriel, God sends Gabriel's our way, people who seem to know what to say at the right time. Some time ago, I encountered a situation that didn't go the way that I wanted to go. And what happened was I started to replay that uh, situation, rehearse it in my mind over and over again. Basically, what I was beginning to do was obsess. But one of the people in my life, my lovely, beautiful wife, that God has used as a Gabriel, a messenger of hope. She began to preach my own message to me. 
She reminded me not to obsess. She reminded me not to dwell on the past, but to continue to move forward. And uh, what happens does not stop God's plan for your life. And so sometimes when it seems like you're at your lowest point, and sometimes when it seems like all is lost, and you don't know what to do or where to go, God lets you know at the right time that I have not forgotten about you. And so you have to be thankful to God for the words of encouragement. And you have to be thankful to God for the people, the Gabriels that God has put in your life to give you uh, encouragement. God's encouragement and confirmation are always right on time. But just know, beloved, today, that with God on your side, you're able to do the impossible. Like Mary, don't debate with God. Just accept what God says. Let God have his way. Like Mary, the presence of the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. And the glory of God will come into your life. Regardless of what you face today, just know that it may seem impossible to you, but it is not. It is possible with our God. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for you that are the God of the impossible. You are able to do incredible things. You are able to make ways out of no ways. And so, Lord, we just honor you and praise you today. We not only praise you for what you have done, but we continue to praise you and thank you even in advance for what you're going to do. We pray for this nation, Father God. We ask, Lord, that you bless the leadership that is about to come in as far as uh, the, the president and the vice president and the entire administrative team. We ask, Lord, that you bless them. We ask, Lord, that they seek you in everything that they do for the greater good of America. And Lord, we ask, Lord, that you just continue, you that you bless America and that you bless all the countries of the world. God, we pray for our children. We ask, Lord, that you just continue to cover them. We ask, Lord, that you strengthen them and that you bless their education. The Bible reminds us that we should teach the the ch a child a way wherein they should walk. And so, Lord, Lord, give us the wisdom, understanding, and knowledge to be able to instruct our children and lead them in a godly heritage. Lord, keep them safe, always. And Lord, I just ask that you bless the staff, the parents, the teachers, and uh, everyone else, the community, uh, as we collectively raise our children. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you. And in all things, we give you the highest praise, hallelujah, hallelujah because truly you are worthy to be praised and we thank you in Jesus name. Amen. As we come to the conclusion of our service, we want to take this time to offer the gift of salvation to you. Jesus died so that you might have life and have that life more abundantly. You don't have to feel alone. You don't have to feel by yourself. You don't have to carry any burdens. The gift of salvation has been paid by Jesus Christ. All you have to do to receive it is to ask Jesus into your heart. Ask Jesus to forgive you for your sins. Make Jesus the Lord of your life. And as you do that, Jesus will come into your heart. Your life will never be the same. You will rest with assurance of where you will spend eternity. You will spend eternity at rest with the master. And so if there's anyone today who has made the decision to receive Jesus into their hearts, we know that heaven rejoices and we rejoice with you as well. Praise God. Beloved, thank you for joining us today for this worship service. Before we go, 
we would thank you for your continued giving. We want to remind you to continue to give because it's such a blessing, not only to the church, but ultimately to others. Because of your continued generous giving, we've been able to keep our church up and running, even during this whole coronavirus pandemic. And so we, we praise God for you and we thank God for you. There are many ways that you can give to this ministry. You can send your tithes and offerings to 7101 North 20th Street, Philadelphia, PA, 19138. You can use Bill Pay, Grace United Methodist Church. The church office mail slot is available Tuesdays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Or you can use the cash app. Dollar sign, Grace is the place. And so we want to continue to encourage you to continue to give. And we know that as you continue to be a blessing to others, God will continue to richly bless you and meet your needs as well. Well, beloved, I'm glad that you were able to join us today. I look forward to seeing you uh, Christmas Eve, 7 p.m. here again. But beloved, have a blessed weekend and week. Have a blessed Christmas. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And remember, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you.